So in this case, we're doing a right-sided L4-5 laminectomy. So we always, we feel for the midline first, and we mark the midline. I like to mark the iliac crest, just to have a, kind of a rough reference of where we, where we are gonna be. And then for an L4-5 laminectomy, where from a clinical perspective, it doesn't matter from which side we go in, as a right-handed surgeon, I will prefer a right-sided approach. So we'll make the incision a little bit on the right side. Uh, so uh, about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half to the right. Now we'll confirm the level now with fluoroscopy before we actually mark the incision. Okay, so this is good now. We are here. We're just below the L4-5 facet joint. We're going to come down perpendicular, find the inferior margin of L4 of the lamina, and we'll dock our tubular retractor right here over the L4-5 facet joint, but a little bit medial, so we can see the lamina of L4. So I'm going to mark this here now. So we have marked the midline here. We have marked an incision to the right of the midline approximately one centimeter. Typically we will inject right under the skin just for hemostasis. Just inject a little bit of uh, lidocaine here with epinephrine. So we'll just make a small incision here. I'll just go very superficial. And we're making it about uh, an incision for a 18-millimeter uh, tubular retractor. So I use the cutting on the bovi to make that incision. And I go down. Knife back. And then we'll go through the fascia with the knife. So we'll make a fascial incision. And then I'll use the first dilator and I go down through the fascia. And now I know from our x-ray that I probably have to go a little bit north. So I feel for the L4 lamina, which I can feel right here. And I want to dock at the inferior edge of the L4 lamina, right at that, on that top of the triangle uh, on the x-ray. So I use the second dilator here. And I can already now, I keep my, my thumb on top of the first dilator so it doesn't come out. And I can already measure the, uh, the depth of the retractor. So it's about 40 for 50, so probably pick a 50. So we'll need a 50, a 18 by 50 tube. Now let's put the retractor in. Uh, X-ray. All right, that looks good. A lights up to a hundred. So now we uh, we're looking at the uh, at the facet joint here. What I want to do first, I want to identify the L4 lamina immediately. And, and it's right there. It's right there, and then that's the facet joint. I don't want to go too far lateral because I don't want to manipulate the facet joint. So now we, we rotate a little bit medial in order to get the angle towards the lamina and the base of the spinous process and I'll start looking for that. You see this? So what I start doing is So now that's the uh the base of the spinous process. 
the L4 lamina on the right side, the inferior edge of the L4 lamina. And now I'm going to start drilling right there. So I will start drilling right at the inferior edge of the L4 lamina. And I, I start with the, the tip of the drill on the soft tissue and I drill with the side. And now the next step is trying to identify the yellow ligament, the ligamentum flavum. Once I see the ligament and flavum, I'm in the safe zone. And now what I do is I keep the, the tip of the drill on the ligament and I remove the bone with the side cutting burr. I don't want to get too far into the joint, but at L4-5 that is usually not a big issue. But as you operate higher up in the lumbar spine, that can become an issue. So the next step is I want to find the insertion of the yellow ligament cranially. I can see the epidural veins. I can go a little bit more medial and lateral with my bone removal here just to get a little bit better exposure. Ball tip. And now at this point, now I've got a nice entry point under the ligament. I put my ball tip probe underneath and lift up the ligament caudally and can pssst. and uh, remove the epidural fat, the ligament here. See, this is the dura underneath. Okay, give me three millimeters. Now we're going caudally, removing ligamentum flavum. And the reason I do this is because I want to look at the dura to understand better how far medial lateral we are. Okay. So now we're, we're removing the ipsilateral yellow ligament. And now we've got nice exposure of the ipsilateral dura. And I'm going to angle now more contralateral, loosen the retractor. So I'm going to go more contralateral now, tighten it. Can we rotate the table away from me a little bit? And now here, there's dura and then the contralateral ligament there, covered still by bone. And this is ligament. So what we'll do is now we'll drill a fair amount of that bone that's right under the spinous process and then we'll undercut the contralateral lamina. And the goal is to expose the ligamentum flavum contralaterally and then remove it. So you can see pretty nicely now that here there is ligamentum flavum here covered by bone. But we'll start pretty superficial. Roll the superficial bone and then go lateral to the ligament and start removing that bone there. See, we can just go straight behind the ligament there and totally skeletonize the ligament and then remove it at the end. You're getting a little bit into the cancellous bone of the contralateral lamina, which is fine. And uh, I guess if you go too far lateral here, you could get into the joint and maybe even cause problems there. Okay, give me a three millimeter kerosene. Thank you. So now since I decompressed the ligament, I can go in here and kind of remove it. And the superficial parts I take with a three millimeter kerosene.
So now we're working our way south, removing more of that ligament. Again, I look at the dura while I'm pulling. And if there's a CSF leak, then this is usually where you get it, working caudally and over the top. Uh, ball tip now. We got this here. Got nice decompression. Contralateral, ipsilateral. All the way ipsilateral there. I can feel the disc space. Contralateral, totally decompressed here. I can feel the pedicle there. That's the foramen, or 4 5 foramen. And then ipsilateral. Also completely decompressed. That's actually the disc space here. You can see the disc here. And now all the ligament is gone. And uh, it's nicely decompressed. Flow seal here with our special catheter. Okay, you have the solumadro. Yes, sir. Do you have Let me take this off. Now we take the uh, take this tractor out. You can see how the muscle comes back together, which is which is why there's very little pain after this operation. And if you have a CSF leak, there's no real dead space. We'll put a stitch into the fascia and then do the subcuticular closure. <coughs> 